Emma Goldman. Bread Emma, activists and anarchists. This speech is now titled Patriotism, a Menace to Liberty. That is the speech that I chose to do this week. This speech was delivered in July, on July 9th in 1908 in San Francisco. This speech was done before World War I and she talked about her views on patriotism and how she believes that it is not a benefit for the U.S. She uses a lot of examples in her full speech uh, talking about how patriotism is bad and harmful. I think that she used this speech to really inform us that we don't need patriotism in a way. That it really is just harmful to us. Now, this speech was originally created by Emma Goldman, but in Howard Zimmer's video, The People Speak, it is read by Sandra O. Oh. Now, I know Sandra O oh by because of Grey's Anatomy. She's a really famous actor. Sandra O oh is a Canadian actress who was born on July 20th, 1971 in Neopin, now Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. The daughter of the Korean immigrants, she started her performance career as a child. She attended the National Theater School of Canada, and at the age of 19, she had her first breakthrough role in television bioptic, The Diary of Evelyn, Evelyn, Evelyn Lau. O's parents put her in ballet at the age of four in hopes of correcting her natural pigeon toe, a move that had unintended consequences of sparking a love for performing. At the age of 10, O appeared in her first play, The Canadian Goose. By the age of 15, the honor students started booking professional gigs in television, theater, and commercials. Now, we, I'm going to talk about Emma Goldman. She was the original woman who read this speech. She was a renowned political activist and anarchist. She rebelled against a chavastic society by advocating on issue, issues such as speech, oh, such as peace, free love, and birth control. During a period when women were deemed as a, the inferior being, she became involved in politics after the infamous Haymarket affair, after which several Prominent anarchists were sentenced to death. Some said that she was outspoken orator and a prolific writer whose work covered a wide range of subjects like women empowerment, sexuality, political atheism, and workers' rights. Emma Goldman's fame as an anarchist grew and she was given the title Red Emma. Now she was given this title because she could be a little bit of hot-headed when it comes to her topics. She was well known for her work and even and even known to devote her she devoted her time to writing, traveling, and lecturing in order to spread the message of anarchism and to garner support for the labor movement. This quote they found in her what I found in her. Free spirit, bold, speaking out against all authority, unafraid, and as the title suggests, living her life as she wanted to live it, not as the rules and regulations and authorities were telling her how to live it. Was given by, was given on Howard Zinn's uh, page, and it is titled, commemorating Emma Goldman, and that's down in my citations. Uh, there's a whole article on it. She unfortunately died on May 14th in 1941 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. She was an American political activist and writer, even though she was originally born in she was born on June 27th in 1869 in Coenus, 
located in Russia province of Luthia, but she immigrated to the U.S. at the age of 13. Now I'm going to read to you her speech that Sandra O. Oh recited. It's the love of one's birthplace, the place of childhood recollections and hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Patriotism, sir, is the last result of scoundrels, said Dr. Johnson. Leo Tolstoy, the greatest anti-patriot of our times, defines patriotism as the principle that will justify the training of wholesale, wholesale murders, a trade that requires better equipment for the exercise of killing of men killing than making of such necessities of life, such as shoes, clothing, and houses. A trade that guarantees better returns and greater glory than the average working man. Indeed, conceit, arrogance, and ego egotism are the essential of patriotism. Let me illustri illustrate. Patriotism assumes that our globe is divided into little spots, each one surrounded by an iron gate. Those who have had the fortune of being born onto some particular spot consider themselves better, nobler, grander, more intelligent than the living beings inhabiting any other spot. It is therefore their duty of everyone living on that chosen spot to fight, kill, and die in an attempt to impose his superiority upon all others. The inhabitants of all other spots reason in like manner, of course, with the result that from early infancy, the mind of the child is poisoned with blood-curdling stories about the German, the French, the Italians, the Russians, etc. When the, children, when the child has, meet, has reached manhood, he is thoroughly saturated with the belief that he is chosen by the Lord himself to defend his country against attack, against attack or invasion of any foreigner. It is for that purpose that we are clamoring for a greater army or navy, more battleships and ammunition. We Americans claim to be peace, to be a peace-loving people. We hate bloodshed. We are opposed to violence. Yet we go into spasms over the joy, over of joy over the possibility of projecting dynamite bombs from flying machines upon helpless citizens. Our hearts swell with pride of the thought that America is becoming the most powerful nation on earth and it will eventually plant her iron foot on the next of all other nations. Such is the logic of patriotism. Thinking men and women the world over are beginning to realize that patriotism is too narrow and limited, a concession to meet the necessities of our time. The centralized of power has brought into being an international feeling of solidarity among the oppressed nations of uh, impressed nations of, be, of the world a solidarity which represents a greater harmony of interest between them working men of America and his brothers abroad then between the American miner and his exploring compatriotry of solidarity which fears not foreign invasion because it is bringing all of the workers to a point where they will say to their masters, go and do your own killing. We have done it long enough.